Right, well welcome to uh, this first edition of On The Bank with Choice Rigs and J Precision. Um, as you can clearly see, I'm not on the bank. Um, you have to excuse the very uncarpy kind of look of the place that we're doing this in, but it was uh, the best best place for the job at the moment. Um, right, without mucking about, I just want to talk to you about the reason we're doing this particular video um, and the rig. So the Splice Stiffy Rig, bags of questions about this rig and if I'm being brutally honest with you I'm sick to death of making them. They are a massive all ache um, but having said that they are a fantastic rig. Um, you've only got to look at how Jamie did out in, Bossard, in at Bossard recently. I mean I think I don't think well in fact I know every single fish that he caught was on this particular rig. The only difference being is he used the £25 version um, because the £35 version would have been breaking the rules on the lake. So that's something to bear in mind. You know, some, some venues, quite rightly so, will have, um, you know, rules on the breaking strains of, their, of, of the materials that you can use, primarily for fish safety. You'll find it a lot on snaggy venues. You know, if they get tethered up, at least they can get away, you know, that kind of thing. I, I believe that's why they do it. I might have that wrong, but I would imagine that's why they do it. Um, now, what we'll do is we'll look at it step by step. This is how to do an eight inch version of the rig, right? So uh, you can apply the measurements if you want to do shorter rigs. I mean, if you're anything like me, I like to know exactly how long the rig is that I'm fishing. Purely because you're not leaving anything to guesswork then, you know, with regards to how you got the bite, how to replicate the bite so uh you know i do like to know exactly how long the rigs are that i'm fishing and this will be how to use how to make an eight inch splice stiffy so without me rabbiting on too much uh let's get into it and have a look how to do it right guys so let's have a look at what you're going to need um goes without saying doesn't it really the uh the 12 core uh apologies for the light in here and stuff if it looks a bit uh Forget the old glare here and there. Um, but yeah, so the 12 core and 35 pound, uh, you're gonna need a Fox Edges or something similar. There are other companies that do these kind of things, but it's, it's what's known as an easy splice. Um, and if you can see there, it's basically, tw you know, sort of twisted wire um, with a gap at the top, um, just here, uh, which obviously, is very important for, uh, for for the splicing process, but we'll get into that into a, in a minute. Um, you're going to need a pulley tool, um, anything, no matter what it is, cheap, nasty, horrible. As long as it gets the job done, doesn't matter. Um, some scissors, something for your inner. Um, so we've gone with uh, just put it up the right way for you. Uh, mouth trap in 20 20 pound there optional but we have to do it super glue i'll come on to that in a minute kickers uh just get one out me being super unorganized so you know like a little tungsten kicker but any kicker really will do and some hooks you know size two wide gapes um either on good authority that the chods work really well with this rig it wouldn't be something that i would have thought of using but uh I can tell you now by looking at some catch reports uh, recently, the chods work well with it as well. So, but for the sake of this video, size two J Precision wide gapes. Um, and lastly, you're going to need some shrink tube in 0.8 mil, which is a bit of a bugger to find. But in, in actual fact, you you don't really need this, but we have to put it on uh, for preservation of the rig. Um, but it's not actually essential. But again, we'll get into that. So first things first, you splice. Now, I always work off the spool wherever I can. You know, you, whenever you watch a lot of these sort of videos, um, not knocking them, because a lot of them are going to be 10 times better than this one, but um, they always tell you to cut off a length of braid or, or you know, fluorocarbon, whatever it may be. Uh, and, you know, in doing so, 
construct your rig off the back of doing that. Now you can waste braid like that, you can waste material. So I always start off the spool. Um, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna measure out, you won't be able to see this, but all I'm doing here is I'm just measuring three inches on the, on the ruler, so that, and pinching it, okay? So there's three inches there, all right? Um, take my splicing, uh, easy splice tool, Ease it into the into the material, uh, like so. It can be a bit of a fiddle if it pokes through. Just keep just keep manipulating it till it goes in. And once it's in, uh, sorry, I went out of shot there. Once it's in, all you've got to do is try and keep this straight. You see a lot of people and it, this this buckles over, and they're trying to push the needle up with it buckled over. And but if you can keep that straight as you ease it up the needle, that's great. It's just going to make life a lot easier for you. Uh, and all you're doing is stopping at halfway, yeah? So I've got half the needle exposed and half the needle with, uh, you know, with the 12 course sat on it and then a tag end here, all right? Now what I like to do then is pull that straight so it's not bunched up, uh, fold it over the top of the needle, push your needle out, like so, exposing the top and that all important loop at the top. Um, tag in through the loop, like so, so you're left with that. And then just ease, working up the, uh, with the braid that's brunched up onto the needle, ease it up, forcing the tag end back inside the, uh, the braid that's on the needle, which I'll just get that back into the shot for you which is obviously gonna create your loop. Now, if I was to pull that straight through now, the loop would close. So what I like to do is pull it down um, until there's a bit of a, you know, like a, a small loop. I mean, what's that? we we'll stick it by the ruler. Um, what we got? Three or four mil loops, something like that. I don't know. Um, right, so, but basically just enough so that you can get your pulley tool into the hole. If I go out of shot here for a sec, guys, I do apologise. So I'm just literally putting this over the, uh, into the loop, like so. Pull the needle away, and then whilst that's whilst whilst the you know the uh, pulley tool is in the hole at the top of the uh, you know the splice loop that we've just made just pulling everything tight now as you can see or just about to see there's a little bit of a tag end sort of sticking out here all right now all we're going to do with that is just pull it out whilst leaving this in yeah uh, pull it out to expose a fair bit of it so i've just literally pulled that out um and it, it exposed a lot of you know a lot more of the tag end and then we're just going to trim that off from your scissors. Let's trim that off. Roughly to the amount that was sticking out, if, if, if that makes sense. So, that, so I'm just taking off the excess, like so. Scissors are blunt as you like, which is never good. And then pulling it tight again. Um, and what that will do then is it will just, obviously the tag end now is all but pretty much disappeared inside uh, inside the splice. So you're left with a nice splice, um, and that is the hook end of the rig done. Um, so off with the needle, off with the uh, pulley tool. Get myself all in knots here myself, um, and there you go. So you've got your spliced end, which will be the hook end. From there, uh, all we're going to do is measure again. I'll bring it into shot, but a measure 10 and three quarter inches. All right, pinch it and then cut it off at 10 and three quarter inches. So I'm left with a 10 and three quarter inch section of 12 core ready to go. So next up, grab your hook. And you know what I did forget? That's a bait attachment. <laughs> Completely forgot to bring 
uh, a micro swivel or something similar for bait attachment, but it doesn't matter, we can crack on. Um, and all we're doing is, is so the opposite end of the, uh, the rig to the splice, got the splice at the top here. Um, I'm just gonna thread a hook on, thread it down until I'm, uh, it almost looks like a KD rig there, doesn't it? You know, just uh, that far away from the hook. So I've just got the, basically got the splice in my hand. And at this point, you would put your bait attachment on. So that's a micro swivel, a rig ring, a uh, bait screw, whatever floats your boat. Um, so that would then go on. And then we're just passing the hook through the loop at the top and already you can see uh, that we've got a very basic sort of spliced rig there. Um, let's see if I can get that into shot a little bit better for you. There you go. Okay, next up your kicker for putting these on, you know, uh, these are really handy for getting any type of kicker on, so I'm sure you guys know, but uh, thin end first onto the needle. Grab your rig, apologies for my chain rattling about there. So, and then obviously, you know, I'm not gonna teach you to suck eggs, I'm sure everybody knows how to do this, just transfer the kicker onto your rig. All right, slide it all the way down, over the eye of the hook, and there we go, all right. So next up is the second splice. So for this, rig at the end of the ruler, hook at the end of the ruler, I should say, so she can get an, an accurate measurement. And then we're going uh, six and three quarter inches, right? So I'm, I'm, pinching the, I'm, I'm pinching the braid here at six and three quarter inches. Uh, Okay, and then we're repeating the same step to do our top splice, which is obviously where you would uh, attach your hook link material, uh, attach your attach to your leg clip, uh, you know, or whatever whatever arrangement you like to use, whether it's a quick clip, quick chain swivel, anything like that. You know, this is the uh, this is the end that you'll attach to, you'll use to attach to. So, same process, just easing the needle in. Uh, again, if it pokes through, just go back, take your time, and she will go through. Uh, this bit's being particularly annoying. There she goes. And exactly the same, I'm just threading down until I get to roughly half a needle. So half a needle exposed, half a needle with, with, with braid on it. Yeah, pulling it tight to make sure it's not bunched up. You've got a true kind of um, amount on there. Obviously, when you push it on, it can bunch up and you're not getting a true amount. It's probably just, that's about right. So about half a needle, as I say, um, ready to go. Then again, out the top, exposing the, the loop that a tag end goes into. Trap it in the loop, slide up, and then I actually use a chollet tool here because I like to have a bit of a bigger loop this end. So all we're doing is closing the loop up a little bit so it's uh, so that the chollet tool um, actually forces the loop open. Okay, so in that goes like that, and then remove the needle like so and then pull everything tight, okay? And obviously there you've got, you've got a rig ready to go. The only thing we're missing is the, uh, the all important inner core. Uh, again, I've got a little bit of a tag end here where I, it was just a little bit long. So that's just sticking out there at the end. And all we do again is just uh, pull a bit out like so, I know this is a game to see lads, but uh, 
get my incredibly blunt scissors because Zoe's got the better ones. Cut off the tag end. And uh, pull it all tight. And as I say, there you've got your finished rig, really, but without the inner core. Okay. Right, the business bit. Now, why do we why do we want to do this in the first place? I suppose it's worth talking about. Um, this was primarily down to Jamie. Jamie was using, you know, when he goes abroad, a lot of his fishing, he cheats and uses bait boats. Um, <laughs> but uh, but he's a big fan of a spliced rig, and the uh, the problem that we have that that you've got when you're dropping a spliced rig out of a bait boat. Obviously, you're never too sure how it's going to sit. There's no rigidity in it uh, to pick away. It won't reset, anything like that. Um, it's got its place, don't get me wrong, this sort of rig has. I, I firmly believe that. Um, you know, so fishing over slightly more sort of uh, dodgy ground uh, where you're not sure exactly what you're sitting over, this stuff will sit lovely. Um, but he wanted, you know, we sort of spoke about how we could incorporate a, uh, a stiff boom section. Now, if you're just going to try and sit there and uh, poke 15 pound, 20 pound chod filament or uh, fluorocarbon down this, I can tell you now, you'll be there for some time. Um, and there is no way on God's green earth that you're just going to be able to feed that. Turn it around. Feed that. Uh, that's, that's 047 diameter. You are not feeding that by hand through the rig. It's not going to happen. So here's the hack, right? Um, find your the start of your splice with your thumbnail. So as you as you squeeze that and run up, you'll feel where the splice starts. Okay. Take your needle. And I'll, I will probably go out of shot here, but it won't matter. Take your needle, so you're, you're going in just where the splice starts and you're working back down the rig um, to where the other splice starts for the hook end, you know? So you're basically putting the whole rig on the needle, except the splices either end. So I'm just gonna work this down. I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> I think you can just about. And I'm just inching this all the way down, inching it down. back in now I've got to there there's quite a lot on the needle so I'm just going to straighten that back out so that it's bunched up down the bottom here uh, free me up a little bit and again yeah, it's going to focus a little bit this is probably the trickiest bit because there's quite a bit to get on the needle you know it's uh, can be a ball ache um, especially when you get a size two stuck in your finger. Right, nearly there. And as I say, all we're doing, I'm actually making this look a lot harder than it really is, because uh, I've got this big size two wafting about, which ain't helping. Probably best to go the other way. In fact, it is. Uh, if you start at the hook end and end up at the boot at the, uh, the other end. And all I'm doing is I'm going all the way down this rig until I meet and my needle doesn't want to go any further because it's uh, because it's met the splice, so you can't push into a splice. And then all I'm doing is poking the needle out. So what you're left with is the, where you attach your hook bait, that's the splice to cut the back of the needle. Where you sorry, attach your lead system, sorry. Um, and then you're, on the other end, you're left with you know, you're coming out just before the splice. That's important. You want to leave a couple of mil just before the splice um, because that will create the hinge. If you don't have that, you've got a really rigid rig right up to the hook. And I think it's important with this stuff, given that the material isn't the thinnest, um, that you've got some flexibility here to aid your, um, you know, to obviously aid hooking the fish. There you go. That looks a bit better, doesn't it? Right, so we've got that sticking out. We've got the, we've got the, uh, the loop of the uh, splice the needle exposed, which I'm hoping you can see. Um, and then all we're gonna do is take our mouth trap, okay, or whatever you wanna use. I mean, 
obviously I'll use a lot of corded gear. Um, again, working off the spool, no need to cut a length off. Um, pass it through, pass it into the splicing needle. Like so, and fold that tag end over. All right, now this might be a bit hard to see. Um, there we go, that's better. So just clamp that down best you can and then feed it through the rig. So I'm literally pulling this all the way through and now my material has gone all the way through, that is the hack. That's what people struggle to do because they're there trying to poke bloody 047 diameter materials through a material that is pretty much the same diameter, you know, of its core, it's never gonna happen. Um, off with the needle. And all you've got to do then is pull it straight. Before you do anything else, pull either end of the rig straight. All right, so I've got two tag ends sticking out. I've got my mouth trap sticking out there. And I have the mouth trap sticking out of the hook end section. Yeah? So now we just need to fold this back a little bit to cut off our tag ends. And you wanna cut this as close to the braid as you can, but do not nick the braid. If you nick that braid when you're cutting it, chuck it away. Because of, start again, because obviously you're weakening the rig massively and you know, you may as well be using a bloody guru feeder rig or something like that because it'll be you'll be compromised. So just chuck it away and start again. It can happen if you if you catch it. Um, so I've just nipped that tag end off and I'm going to pull that tight. And what will happen is the inner then will just disappear inside. Same again at the top section. Uh, so there's my tag end look sticking out. I'm just going to. So the hook's in my hand there. I'm just going to cut this off as close to the braid as I dare without actually cut, cut, cutting the braid itself. Um, and then there you go. So now if you pull that tight, there's your stiffy rig. That's it. That pretty much is it. Now, if I lay this down here, you'll see straight away that, that that's curved up. Um, whatever wizardry goes on here, I don't know. But what I do know is it pulls dead straight. You don't need to steam it. Uh, so, Pulley in one end, shot it tool on the other end, pull as hard as you like, off she comes, and there you have it. Now, I'm not going to bore you with um, why I said about sh glue and shrink tube. I'm not going to go through it all, but what I will tell you is just quickly, obviously, where the braids where the fluoro um, finishes and starts so where the boom finishes and starts there is a chance that uh, that can poke out now I ain't selling a rig with um, you know fluorocarbon sticking out of it and looking crap you know it won't really affect the rig but uh, obviously it, the, the way to get around that is to cut yourself off a couple of sections uh, I'll just show you really quick uh, Feel free to bugger off now because it, if, if this is boring you, because uh, we've gone over the main the main reasons. But two pieces onto um, onto a needle, needle through the uh, the loop of the rig, push them both on, and then it's just simply a case then of uh, feeding the shrink tube over the join. Uh, dab of glue here, so a dab of glue just in front of it, dab of super glue, feed that over, repeat at the other end, uh, over your join, like that. Um, obviously, like I say, you would use the glue, and then that just secures the, uh, the that just obviously secures the, uh, the boom in place, there's no way that it can come out. Uh, again, listen, that's, I'm sorry about the lightning here, it's not ideal, but I really hope that 
after a few watches, um, you may be able to sort of take something from, from something from this and you know learn how to do these bloody splice stiffy rigs. As you can see, guys, that's why these rigs aren't cheap. We don't price our rigs. Um, we do price our rigs on the components used, but a lot of the time it's more about how, how long they take to do. So uh, hopefully, as I say, that there's still got a bit of a kink in it, but you, so that, that will steam dead straight. And what we do is we steam the shrink tube as well after um, we've, you know, uh, glued it. Um, so yeah, there you have it. That is the splice stiffy. Um, thanks for watching and uh, let us know how you get on, you know, drop a few comments. What I, what I will do, is um, I'll put some instructions in the comments um, so that, uh, which is probably far better than me rabbiting on like I have done. But um, yeah, as I say, I hope you can take something from it, guys. And uh, it's a fantastic rig. You will not get a stronger rig. Um, you will not get, you know, if, if, if you're up against it, if, there's, if you need to be pulling fish out of snags, um, I don't know, places like we, we fish the Ebro, you know, if, you, if places like the Ebro, anywhere that's, uh, a little bit on the uh, the test, you know, that's a, a testing situation where you, you really need your gear to hold up. You ain't gonna go far wrong with those. Right, cheers everyone.